joining me today. Um, I'm Jo, I'm from the UK and today I'm going to be sharing with you a fancy fold card. Now this is a card that I made um, about a year ago um, with the beautiful hand pen suite and um, just recently I've been asked two or three times for instructions on how it was made so I thought today would be a really good opportunity to actually um, make that for you. So I'm going to be using the um, beautiful flowering field suite um, so this is one of the DSP from that which I'm going to be using today and there's quite a lot of DSPs, quite a lot of um, cardstock used to actually make this project but you'll see it's really worth it in the end, it's really pretty. So I'm going to start off with a piece of um, Evening Evergreen cardstock. Now I'm in the UK so I'm going to be making this in metric on this occasion um, but what I will do is I will put together some measurements for um, for imperial because um i know that uh, some of you work in imperial measurements and although there's uh, we can work measurements out they're not a natural direct match so um i'll start off with metric and then you'll see exactly how it was made and you can do exactly the same in imperial so i'm starting off with my a4 card so for our card base in the uk we cut ours at 14.85 centimeters and that's this gives us two pieces of a5 i'm then going to score now normally to make a card base we would score at ten and a half but on this occasion we're going to score at 10 and then we're also going to score at 20. so that will leave us with a one centimeter strip just on one end okay so I'm going to take the other half because we're using both halves for this project and again I'm going to score at 10 and this time I'm going to cut at 20 so we only need the one section with that extra centimetre on just to join them together. Okay so once I've done that I'm going to put my card together in a moment but what I want to do first of all is to stick our DSP so I have chosen to use um, this beautiful one here I loved it because it's got that um, it's got the dark colors in it which is makes for a card base but it also has that really vibrant bright colors as well so what I want to do is I want to actually create a card so eventually I'm not going to stick these together just yet because we want to actually um, do all our sort of gluing and cutting first it just makes it easier going through the cutting machine that's all so if you can imagine that this is the inside of our card so what I want to do um, is just to stick four pieces of DSP onto my card like this and we've got an extra one for the front now I think actually it might be easier for me to fold this at least to show you how it goes together um, because then you can make sure that you're sticking on the right pieces so let me do that first so if you can imagine this is a normal card front so when I say normal card front we've got this extra just one centimeter here I'm just going to fold that backwards so you can see I've got one card here and then I'm going to fold this one in half again and eventually that will glue onto there and this will create a concertina card so it will be glued onto that section and then this piece will fold back on itself. So when we open it this will be glued and you'll have that sort of effect going on. But as I say, it's easier to actually stick now and then cut and then we'll, we'll move on with the actual sticking together. So these are my two pieces here. So what I want to do is just stick my DSP onto these sections. Now this DSP measures nine and a half centimetres by 14.35 and I'm purposely not gluing on the centre I just literally put in glue around the outside edges and I just want to center this onto my card and I'm going to repeat again such beautiful paper this is it's really gorgeous
So it's four pieces that measure nine and a half by 14.35. And then you need an additional one from the, for the front. Now, if you want to, you can use a different paper on the front. It's entirely up to you. Um, I've decided to stick with the same all the way through, um, but by all means, you choose which way you'd like it to go. Okay, so stuck the four pieces in place. You'll see the reason I don't glue in the center in a moment. There's two reasons actually, um, but I will explain those to you in a second. Okay, so I'm gonna work on one at a time. And what I want to do is to take my um, stitched rectangles. Now these, um, I've used the fourth one from the centre. So you've got one, two, three, and then this is the fourth one that I'm using here, okay? You could use different sizes if you wanted to. It's entirely up to you, really. Um, but once you've chosen your size, that's the size you're going to stick with. So what I want to do is I'm going to bring in my cutting machine. Okay, so what I want to do is to pop this on here. I'm hoping you'll be able to see this properly. So I've popped it onto here and I just want to place it somewhere. Um, I like to try and get these three borders roughly the same and then I have a, a slightly deeper one at the bottom. But again, if you want to put it completely central, that's entirely up to you. So I'm gonna start off with one. So the reason I've put the DSP on first is because it saves us having to do another cut. Now, obviously this does make it a little bit tight. So just be careful as you're winding it through the machine. And I am gonna pop that the other way. Okay. So then I can pop this out and you'll see this is the first reason I didn't glue in the center was because when we pop it out we have two pieces so we can use these on additional cards in fact we're going to use some of these dark pieces to finish off our card at the front you'll see um, so that's one of the reasons and I'll explain the other one in a moment so now what I'm going to do is just fold this over and I'm going to grab a pencil, if I can find one amongst my stuff on my desk. And I just want to draw inside that rectangle. So you can see I've drawn inside it there. And what I'm going to do this time when I line this up, in fact, sorry, I wanted to do that the other way. You want to actually draw onto your paper because we want those stitch marks to be on the front. So draw onto your paper. I'm gonna pop it in again and just line this up the best I can. It's not the end of the world if it's a little bit out. We just want it to be as accurate as we can get it really. Now obviously the cut lines, if I turn this over, are actually um, just sort of on the inside here, uh, sorry, on the middle bit here. So you won't get it exactly right. So you just want to line it up the best you can. And again, just look at sort of where you are, top and bottom as well. If you want to tape it down with a little bit of washi tape or something, that's fine. But I just find if I'm really careful, then I am fine. So again, just turning it through once. It's a little bit thicker, so you just need to bear that in mind. It's a little bit more robust. And again, I'm just going to pop it out. And again, I've got those two separate pieces. Okay. So now what I want to do, I want to do exactly the same on this piece here. So I'm just going to put this on top. Just line it up so it's nice and even. And again, I'm just gonna draw into those rectangles. 
let's say just roughly we're never going to get it exact because of the actual movement that sort of happens as it goes through so just try and get it as, as best you can you can see sort of the rough lines we can always use a pencil to rub uh, sorry a rubber to rub any extra lines out that we have I think you'll find they'll disappear Okay, so I'm hoping my page hasn't moved too much. It did move around a little bit. You might have a little bit of desk on there. So now what I'm going to do, now I've cut all those four windows, I'm going to glue this little strip here. And I'm actually going to glue the two sections together. Now, when you glue them together, just go up to the score line. Don't go over it. Just literally go up to it. And then what I do is I tend to fold it and just make sure that that edge is nicely stuck in place. So the join is on the back and then this is our inside. OK, so this is going to fold up like this. And this is the front of our card. So now what I want to do is to stick my last piece of DSP. But first of all, what I want to do is to make sure that everything is going to fit correctly, which um, you'll see this section here where it's not stuck. This is where we're going to join our spare piece in a second. So I'm going to glue this onto the front. And this time I am going to just put some glue around this edge here because we're not going to be needing that to be loose at all. I'm going to pop this on the front. Okay, and because I haven't glued in that, I've obviously got this section here. Now this time, what I'm going to do is to actually take um, a ruler and a knife. So just brought in my little cutting mat here. And I'm gonna grab my knife. And it's entirely up to you. You can use a ruler if you wish. I'm quite okay with a knife. I'm quite happy to just run it down the edge because remember we've got, not only have we got cardstock, we've got two layers of DSP as well here. So it gives you quite a edge to work to. Okay, and then I'm just gonna turn it over and just nick any corners that haven't quite cut through because it's quite difficult to get your blade right into that corner. Okay, and again, you've got another piece of DSP which you can work with. Now, when this is closed at the moment, can you see this is where things haven't lined up exactly? We've got a little edge showing here. This is all going to disappear in a little while, so don't worry about that. So that is our card. So we've done our base card. Now what we need to do is to make the insert section. So this time, um, I'm going to do this one in soft succulent. And this time it is going to measure 29 centimetres long by eight and a half centimetres wide. So that's my eight and a half centimetres. And our card is 29.75. So I'm literally taking three quarters of a centimetre just off that end. And this time I'm going to score at four centimetres. make sure I don't cut it so four centimeters then at seven and a half centimeters 
and then 14 and a half centimeters which is actually the halfway point then 21 and a half and then again at 25 So there you can see if I give that a quick fold. Now, the way this is going to work, this section um, is going to go, um, let me think, is it inwards or outwards? Let me have a think. Inwards. <laughs> I have to think about it then. So I'm going to fold this in like a concertina. So you'll end up and it will look like this okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to glue some paper to this section here so I'm going to start off um, now I've used the actual reverse of my beautiful paper here so you're going to need two pieces and these measure eight centimeters by six and a half and they're going to go on the two sections there I've then got two pieces here which are three by eight and I'm going to stick these towards the inner score line so you're going to end up with these little strips either side and then just to break it up a bit I have actually just stamped some of the tulips onto this section here so I'm going to stick all those in place next I'm going to do some more stamping on the front so you'll be able to see how I stamped the tulips. Now, if you're, um, if you're a demonstrator, you'll know that I had the privilege of um, demonstrating this at um, one of our events last year uh, when it was brand new out of, out of the box, so to speak, and it was just such a privilege to work with. But hence, all my products that I've got are not branded products so um, all of my uh, stamps etc are in just plain cases so I can't even show you the beautiful pictures on the front but you'll be able to see those in the catalogue. Now also as part of this suite and again I'm unbranded here are the beautiful um, brass brushed brass butterflies that I always have trouble saying so I'm just going to pop one of these. Now these are flat, so these are brilliant because they will still go through your post um, without adding any additional bulk. So they're great for that. Okay, so this is now where we are. We've got our section for the middle and we've also got our main card that we made earlier. So what is going to happen, if you lay your card like this, so you've got these two are flat and then you've got this V in the middle so the mountain fold in the middle and then I've got this valley fold here so I'm going to weave this through here and now what I want to do is I'm going to add a little strip of glue and I'm going to turn it this way just because it's going to be easier for me to actually do I'm going to add a little run of glue along that edge and then what I want to do is just to tuck it inside between the DSP and the cardstock. So this is where we didn't actually um, add glue to that centerpiece, if you remember. And I just want to line it up. Unfortunately, my recording decided that it wanted to finish halfway through actually recording this project unbeknown to me. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk you through the last pieces because actually you'd seen the bulk of it in the actual um, video that did record. Unfortunately, um, I can just sort of explain the last pieces to you. So what happened was um, where we were, I had stuck this end piece under here so I just stuck it under the between the DSP and the actual cardstock at the front so if you remember we didn't glue around that middle section so it was just enough for me to stick that underneath so then what I did I turned it over and I added a little bit of glue under the section between the cardstock on the other side as well it's just to secure it into place okay so once that was all secured and if you're not sure of um, exactly as I'm explaining then then please contact me because um, it is 
uh, it is quite a simple sort of uh, slipped into that sort of gap so um, just shout if you're not 100% sure and then you're going to repeat it for the other end so again I stuck some glue along the strip that was the excess piece and stuck it between the DSP and the cardstock and then on the reverse I just added a little bit of glue under this section here just to make sure that it's secured in place okay so hopefully as I say you haven't missed too much and, and this will explain it fully to you so on the centre sections here, I just stamped um, my greetings. I tend to use the same greeting twice um, because it kind of depends on what angle you're looking at it from. So I tend to do that, but again, decoration is your choice. You do exactly what you wish. Okay, so on the front of the card, so if you recall, we had these sections that we'd cut out earlier. So all I did was because we want it to be fit inside this window we if i used it as it was that is going to get stuck on little pieces so all i did was take my scissors and i cut along the actual perforated edge on all four sides just to remove um those away and what that did as i say on all four sides i've just done two there but on all four and that will just make it just small enough that it will fit inside that window and you're going to glue it to this front section so if i turn it up this way so at the front so this was the fold if i bring in my template you'll be able to see so this is our fold here this is the section that is glued inside so all I'm then doing is this part will be shown on the outside and that's where I added some glue. So just under here onto that section you'll see I added glue just to glue that in place. I then used the rectangle down in size which I cut here in basic white. I just stamped it with some tulips and added my little greeting and some little butterflies. And then on the reverse, I did the same again. So again, I stuck one of the green pieces that we'd cut earlier back on top, and then a smaller one with the basic white. So this is where you can add your greeting. So as you can see, the video stopped, fortunately, not too far down the line, so it was okay. Um, but if you've got any questions whatsoever, then please contact me um, on josieblackman at gmail.com or you can go to my website, joeblackman.com, um, and I will answer any questions you have so that you know you can make this. Okay, so I hope you enjoy that today. And again, apologies that the video stopped recording. It's always very annoying. Um, if you don't spot it, then obviously <laughs> there's not a lot you can do about it. So um, I do apologize, but hopefully uh, you'll still understand how it goes together. And um, there we go. And that will just go in your envelope like so. So take care, have a good week, and I'll see you again next week. Take care, bye.